There is a supernatural world that surrounds us, and sometimes it manifests to people like you and me. You'll hear stories like this and so much more right here on Supernatural Confrontations. The title of our story today, our interview today, is entitled Shapeshifter. I think you'll find it incredibly interesting. But first, a word from our trusted sponsor. Did you know that the aging process starts as early as the age of 25? After that, you start to lose about 1% of your collagen supply every year. Folks, try this at home test, I have, to see if you've got enough collagen. Pinch your skin. If it immediately bounces back, then you have enough collagen in your skin. If it doesn't bounce back or fold back immediately, then you might need a collagen supplement. Multi-collagen helps rejuvenate your body from the inside out with five supercharged types of collagen your body needs for optimal health. Give it a try. Your health is your wealth after all. Taste, inspect, and judge risk-free for yourself. If it doesn't live up to your expectations, this is an incredible deal, ladies and gentlemen. You have a full 60 days to get a complete refund, no questions asked. Plus, you'll get 51% off, along with several free bonuses included at no extra cost. Go to the link below, healthwithla.com, healthwithla.com. Folks, I take it every day. So Dita joins us. Um, she lives in New Mexico, and she had an encounter with this black dog. And I've heard stories similar to this, not quite exactly like this, before, but let's let's roll the interview. You'll hear it and decide for yourself. I will weigh in on it at the very end uh, because I have some things to talk about and, and discuss and, and say about what a shapeshifter is and why I think she encountered one. But um, here's the interview. Once again, folks, Supernatural Confrontations, we're here with Dita. And I just want to thank everyone who comes on the record because it takes a certain amount of boldness and, and, and courage on their part because um, you know, a lot of times and we hear this all, all the time. I, I can't go to my pastor with this. He'll think like he'll think I'm crazy or I don't want to I can't tell my friends or whatever. But we know that that stuff happens. Good stuff, bad stuff. We live in a supernatural world and it surrounds us. I say that every single show. So without me blabbing away here and taking up your time, what happened to you? Tell us about that, please. Sure. Um, well, you're absolutely right. I very hard to talk about because people look at you like you're crazy when you tell them something like this. But about 10 years ago, I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We have the petroglyph monument that I live right next to. Oh, and wow. for those that don't know that, it's about 17 miles long. It's a lava escarpment on the west side of Albuquerque, loaded with petroglyphs and arrowheads and all kinds of things like that. And it's someplace we we walk all the time. It's very close to our house. We took our dog out. Um, this time it was just me alone with the dog. I had him off the leash and we're, he's having fun chasing rabbits. And all of a sudden I look up and standing on some lava rocks is a black dog. And I, Immediately, I tried to get my dog to come to me. He's very um, aggressive with other dogs. And I thought, oh, I'm going to have a dog fight on my hands. He sees the dog and takes off after him. It was about 100 yards away. So I'm running after him in a panic. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching him. He climbs right up on these rocks to this black dog. And they're sniffing each other. And I'm still running. And I'm keeping my eye on him. And all of a sudden the dog was gone. The black dog just disappeared. And I, I never seen anything like that. And there's no place it could have gone. I mean, I would have seen it had it jumped to other rocks or ducked under into like a little hole under a rock or something. 
didn't see anything. What got me was my dog was just as confused. He was just standing on the rock, looking around. He couldn't pick up a scent. And, and normally he would have picked up the scent and gone after it, wherever it went. It's the area that this happened. Um, it's straight up on the left side and it's about 20 feet down on the right side. So I would have either seen him go up or jump down. It would have been quite a jump. Didn't see it. Got up there and I just had this overwhelming feeling of fear. It, I've, I'm retired law enforcement. I've never felt that kind of fear. Something was just really, really wrong. So I got my dog on the leash and we took off back home. And yeah. it's something to this day I can't make sense of. Uh, it was, I mean, there was a dog there. It was very real and it, I mean, I guess I could explain it away had my dog not been with me as seeing a shadow or something. But the fact that he went after it, he was sniffing it. They were having some type of contact and then it just vanished. So it was about two or three days after that. I didn't want to go back over there. I was kind of freaked out. And I started looking around. I thought, does it have a den? Is there something I missed? And I start just combing the area, go down into the ravine, which again is about 25 feet below where this happened. It's a drop. And I go down and I'm just looking and I come across this huge, this large lava rock covered in petroglyphs. Never seen it before. Um, never seen one in the escarpment. I'm sure they, I mean, I haven't covered the whole escarpment since I've lived here, but there's nothing like it around. And it's just sitting down in this ravine right below where this dog disappeared. So that was my curiosity is, you know, what did I see? I've been trying to figure this out. Is there something supernatural? Obviously there is um, going on. And I included a, the picture of the rock uh, with the email I'd sent you to see what you thought about it. Let me ask you some questions. How far away were you as you're running? Now, when you run in a, in a place like that, unless it's a nice, with were you running on some sort of like a road, a smooth road, or was it? Uh, like it's not smooth. Um, it's like a utility road to reach some yeah. of the power lines up in there. So it's rocky, sandy, a lot of sand. Uh, and it was about 100 yards ahead of me uh, when I initially saw it. And of course, I'm closing the gap running. My dog is way out ahead of me. Um, and I, I was probably about... 25 yards away when it just disappeared. So that's really close. So let me just, for, for our listeners, you're you're a trained observer. If you're in law enforcement, you are a trained observer. Yes. So, you know, you, you've got a, a leg up on the general populace because you went through that type of training and, and learned how when you're observing something to look at things objectively. And so I'm assuming your eye was on this thing, but let me ask you this. As you're running, I know when I run, um, if I'm, I'm looking straight ahead, <clears throat> let's say on the beach, um, if I'm looking straight ahead, I don't need to really look at my feet. But if I'm on a road like what you're talking about, I might be doing this. Did Were you running and looking at your feet and then picking your head up? Um, not, not that I remember, because I was more concerned about keeping an eye on the dogs to okay. see if I'm going to so, uh, any aggression. Is it? Is it, did you, was your eye trained on the dog at all times? Yes. Okay. So I, I believe that as a trained yes. observer, you're not going to, okay. I, I believe that. So you're looking at the dog, you're 25 yards away. That's close enough to see if a dog was wearing a collar. Was the black dog wearing a collar? Nothing. Okay. So let's say, so I'm, I'm looking for a prop and of course there is none, but let's say this is the rock. So on this side, it's like 25 yards down. Yeah, about so 25 down. feet. Okay, 25 feet. Yes. That's that's a long, that, that's a big it jump. Is. Dogs aren't going to jump off a 25-foot ledge. And on this side, what did we have on that side? 
It goes straight up to the top of the mesa. It's like this. Mm -hmm. So it's like that. So you've right. got the whole ledge here. How was the, so your dog? How did your dog gain access to this dog? Well, the the road runs right up to that area, and it's an access point for power lines. Um, so he ran up to the end of that road. And then the big lava boulders start to build as it goes up the mesa. And the black dog was standing on one of those lava rocks right at the end. And my dog just jumped up on the rock with it and they're sniffing each other. And then it was gone. Was the black dog bigger than, what kind of dog do you have first of all? Uh, my dog was a Labrador Rhodesian Ridgeback mix. He was a very large dog. Yeah, and this yeah. dog, the black dog was a comparable size. I would say German Shepherd size. Bigger or smaller? Um, it, about the same size as my dog. What time of day was it? It was um, probably about 3, 3.30 in the afternoon. <clears throat> what season? What, 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 you know? I, I mean, it was probably towards the end of summer where we were, it wasn't super hot, um, but it wasn't. So the days are long still. The days are long, yeah. So you're there at 3.30 in the afternoon. So it's not getting on dusk. You see this black dog. He's on the rock. And as you're running, did you actually see him just vanish? In front it was of just dog? gone. Yeah, just gone. So like, like, okay, like you're looking like this. Let's say mm -hmm. one dog, two dogs. You're looking at the dogs. They're sniffing each other. All of a sudden... Just yeah, gone. Just like that. And and the so I and I'm looking at my dog and he's just standing on the rock, bewildered, just looking around, kind of confused about where did this thing just go? And normally he would be on the hunt. I mean, he would be on the scent. Uh that was his nature. And he wasn't even sent, he was just looking confused, like. Where did you go? So when you went up to get your dog, what was his reaction? What did he do? Um, he, I mean, he certainly let me put on the leash. His hair was all bristled. Um, he kept looking around. I kept pulling him, trying to get him to come with me. He certainly was hesitating on coming with me. And I, again, I was just, something came over me. I Absolute fear. I, I don't even know how to explain it other than that that we need to leave this area right now. Was the black dog... So I kind of drug him down. I'm sorry, drug him down. And then we just left as fast as we could. So was the black dog wolf-like in any way or no? Uh, it certainly looked um, a shepherd. I mean, we have coyotes. Um, it, it definitely was not a coyote because we encounter those every now and then. Sure. Um, it, it certainly had... Uh, upright ears, all black, uh, medium fur, that I could tell from when I was looking at it. Again, kind of looks shepherd-like, but no markings, no no collar, nothing like that. This is what I think you may have en encountered, specifically because the area that you're in, with all the petroglyphs, um, and then you find... The petroglyph, it'd be really interesting to get a picture of the petroglyphs below the rock, the one that you saw that you'd never seen before in, right. in the creek bed. That'd be really interesting to see what it is. I would posit that, and I've, I've let me just stop by, by telling everybody a quick story here, that um, when I was on the, uh, um, the Diné tribe's reservation um, and I was with Pastor Curtis and he told me a story when he actually took me to the place where he was about 15 or 16 years old. They were, it's a very hilly area. Like the hills just kind of roll in the desert like that. So the kids are playing, you're or climbing up one hill. They hear this horrible scream. They get to the top and coming up the hill is a wolf man. It's the only way you can describe mm. a dog man, you know, the legs of a wolf, the body of a man, head of a wolf like this. But I also know, I don't know, but I, I have heard and studied in my research 
that shamans can they'll adapt um, a certain a certain spirit will attach to them and they will literally transmogrify change into that totem animal and what you could have seen was a shaman and his his totem or his what he was able to transfer him his, into or transform mm -hmm. into would be the black dog like that's, a shapeshifter a, a shapeshifter exact, exactly what it is i mean i'm sure you've thought about a shapeshifter oh but yes <laughs> that's what i think you encountered uh, specifically because of the fear thing i mean if it's just another dog why are all of a sudden are you afraid you know yeah tell, tell, I've, describe the fear again it, it was so intense it was just it was coming from inside that just you you need to leave now wow I mean, we, we have to leave now and again like i said i i mean i spent a career um in law enforcement i've never felt that kind of fear ever and and never felt it again um and i think it that's why it took me a few days uh, to want to go back to that area to even look so when you were back that fear was you know no, no, did you go with your dog or by yourself i went with i took my husband and we took our dog and um of course he he didn't know what to think about the whole situation um but i really i did not want to go by myself and, but you didn't uh, feel any fear when you got back i did there. not and when we walk out there even to this day and i have never seen anything like it again and i've never felt that level of fear out there and the rock i mean it's a very very large rock sitting in this ravine um covered i mean you'll see one or two petroglyphs here and there maybe a few on a rock this one it it looks like a, what it reminded me of a highway like this is the road sign to something i'm like why is it in a ravine it's not even up on a trail it sits kind of in a arroyo and um it's covered in handprints footprints lots of spirals which that's the gateway. That's the portal. Yeah. And that's what I had heard. But, you know, when you go to the the rangers, they tell you, oh, it's just the universe. It's their way of depicting things. There's sense. there's even um, what appears to be a camel, which is really interesting to me. It's not a horse. Yes, exactly. And a lot okay. of all over. In my opinion, when you see this, that signifies a gateway, a portal. To the other dimension to the other side that's and you see these all over the world it's like a so you know the archaeologists well it means blah 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 or the rangers no 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 because there is no supernatural worldview that's a gateway that's a portal and i think you were in a place where and you already said this where you weren't supposed to be but you were there anyway right uh, it, i mean it's it's just bothered me ever since because like i said i do investigations for a living and you look for every plausible answer and i just could never i've never been able to find one and yeah it's not something you go to church and talk about and even your own family is kind of like well i don't know i don't know what that was uh, you know, i think you're you, imagining something or it was a shadow or it, was, no, it wasn't a shadow let's you know next you you're a trained observer you know what you saw your dog knew what he saw and I believe what you encountered was a shapeshifter. There's no, there, in, in my opinion, I mean, it, it makes no sense. The fact that you're near the petroglyphs, where you are, you're overcome with fear. Obviously something is there. And then of course you got this, you know, yes. in the ravine. Um, that's, and then you knew, you knew you weren't supposed to be there and you got out. Right. I've heard this other by other people with other circumstances, there's this overwhelming fear and they know they're not supposed to be there. They've got to leave and get out now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you didn't have any missing time or anything like that, right? No, no. no. Okay. Yeah, I just- uh, I, I, It was your... the fear. I, I can't even describe how intense the fear was. I have never felt that kind of fear before. And I mean, it just- I think that's what bothered me the most is 
if it's just a dog, why am I afraid? I mean, I, I afraid? have control over my dog now. And but. Yeah, log logically, it makes no sense. And I mean, if it's just another dog, it's just another dog, but it's not. And it disappears right in front of your face. I mean, right in front of your face, your dog yeah. picks up on it. He's confused. And then mm -hmm. you're hit with this overwhelming fear. I think, you know, I'll just, I'll give you the last word, but I'm, I'm voting for shapeshifter all day long. I'll give you the last well, word. I I appreciate that. And I mean, it, it makes me feel a little better that I'm not the only one in the world that's ever experienced something like this. Um, and it's just interesting. It's never happened again. Um, that's good. Yes. Well, Dina, thanks so much for coming on the record. It's it's a great story. And it, once again, it shows us that, you know, here you are, you're just out for a walk with the dog. You're not looking for anything. You're not thinking about anything. All of a sudden, boom, you're smack up against the supernatural. And that's yes. why this show is called Supernatural Confrontations. Thanks so much for coming on the record. I appreciate oh, it. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Shamans and those who are engaged and embrace the occult sometimes have the ability to shapeshift. They can appear as another form. Um, in, in the remake of a Lone Ranger movie, which we walked out of because it was just blatantly had occult underpinnings all the way through it, um, Tonto can turn into a crow or a raven. Well, Here's another story. Pastor Curtis, um, when he was a, a, a teenager, he and two or three friends were walking up this hill on the reservation, and um, they heard this horrible scream, and they got to the top of the hill, and they looked down the hill, and there was a dog man coming right at them, head of a wolf, legs of uh, a wolf, but the arms of a man and the body of a man. So that was a <laughs> was in-your-face confrontation and they ran and this thing chased them back to the house. So we've heard stories like this. Shamans have the ability through um, occult underpinnings to transform themselves. So was this black dog uh, a shapeshifter? In my opinion, it was. Um, she felt uh, a lot of fear, which was completely unwarranted. Uh, could, th could this place have been a portal, a gateway? Very possible. Anyway, folks, um, you know, we get stories like this, and thank you for uh, your bravery and her bravery for coming on. And um, if you have a story like this and you'd like to come on the record, shoot us an email, supernatural at lamarzuli.net, supernatural at lamarzuli.net. And be patient. We only need one email. John Adam, our producer, will get back to you, and we'll schedule a Zoom call, and you can come on the record. Anyway, folks, uh, number four is, is, is going to be handed to the duplicator. We will be starting a, uh, a, a sale, a pre-sale like we always do. All four UFO films will be bundled up and we'll be getting those out before Christmas. So you want to put your order now for the pre-sale for number four. It is visceral. Anyway, thanks so much for watching Supernatural Confrontations. And remember, the supernatural world is real and surrounds us. And sometimes it manifests to people like you and me. Something very dark and disturbing is happening. It is a global phenomenon that knows no boundaries. It adheres to no cultural mores, and the ones who are engaged in this nefarious activity or beyond reproach. People are being taken against their will. In the cover of darkness in the dead of night, they are subjected to bizarre examinations that are often sexual in nature. These people are terrified, violated, confused, and with no place to turn to, as who would believe them. This is their story. No heartbeat, ultrasound, no baby, DNC, no fetal tissue. There was nothing, it was clean. He's like, ma'am, are you sure you were pregnant? I'm like, this is my doctor, you can call her, I was pregnant. He's like, you didn't bleed all night, you don't have, nothing came, I'm like, no, nothing came out of me.